As collective Mario fans, we can all come together and agree that Nintendo has done some, some strange things with Mario in the past, but also they kept it pretty consistent. I mean, Mario never did anything crazy and went off the rails and did something that was just not right for the plumber. Wait, what was Peach looking at? But everything was all fine and dandy until we got to Super Mario Odyssey and we got to this moment. Cappy and Mario are just sharing a bond together, having a good time, and then boom! Then Mario comes out like, who the hell? heck are you pulling up on? Bowser like legit pulled up with an entire dragon. Like what? <laughs> now this was seriously the craziest thing I think I've ever seen like in Mario history. This thing doesn't even look like it belongs in the Mario universe. Where did Bowser get this dragon? He just kind of flying through the sky with this thing. It, it doesn't make sense. I think the better question was how was Bowser able to tame this thing? He was just flying by in a ship one day and said, hey, gigantic dragon, you're mine. But then Bowser flies off and just like, you know what, Mario, you handle that. So Mario's broken down in this random ruined kingdom apparently wearing a chef's outfit. Why was I wearing this? As cool as it was that we were fighting a giant dragon, it was also amazing that the world around it was just so beautiful. It was a beautifully built world and kingdom where it was just completely in ruins. Something happened here so long ago, whether it was this dragon that destroyed everything or something else that caused this total collapse of the society, and it sucks that we can't visit it more. Then we fly up and it's time to take on the dragon one on one. You also gotta remember this is coming right after 3D World where we fought bosses like a creaky fence. We never really had that many creepy Mario bosses to begin with. I mean the creepiest ones we have is Bowser with boobs and then you also have older sister alien queen. So a fight with a giant monstrous realistic dragon in a Mario game was something I definitely never thought I'd see. I mean seriously I just sat there at first for a little bit and tried to take it all in but this was pretty awesome. Now the fight itself isn't all that special. I mean, it just kind of fights with its head. I would have loved to see like a full-fledged battle with the Odyssey and you know the dragon in the sky or something. I don't know. That'd have been pretty cool. Um, but you just kind of jump onto its head, take off the shackles from Bowser, and then ground pound on the noggin. So yeah, you kind of just dodge some lightning attacks three times, jump on his head and take the shackles off three times, and then ground pound on his head three times, and it's over. I think I was just so shocked that this happened and I wanted to just enjoy it more and just I wanted more of this and it was just over before I knew it. It was like a 10 minute battle and exploring this area and then you were done, you never came back. And it kind of made me upset, like I wanted to see more of this. I mean the only kind of level we had was like a small mission where Mario had to go in 2D and like stop platforms in order to get across. That was it. We didn't get to see any type of ruined city, ruined area, or anything like that, which I thought would have been really cool. It probably would have been one of the coolest kingdoms. And they said, nope, you get dragon, you're done. But seriously, I love the Lord of Lightning. It's one of the first times in a mainline Mario game we've seen a boss so bizarre and weird like this. We're used to bosses like this within the Mario RPG series, like Paper Mario and Mario and Luigi. So to see something like this in a mainline 3D open world sandbox style of Mario game was really, really cool. I mean, it's such a huge break from, here you go, fight Boom Boom in this square ring as he spins around for the 100th time. And I think that's why a lot of people love the Mario and Luigi game so much, it's just because the bosses are very unique characters and enemies throughout the game's story and the worlds you explore. It's not just the same enemies from the past games, you get to see something new and creative and unique that changes what you think about Mario. It makes Mario something different and it stretches what we know about the character. Like I know a lot of people that didn't like Paper Mario or Origami King's bosses because it was like a roll of tape and some scissors, but for a roll of tape and scissors they were unique, like they had unique attacks, it was like a unique boss, it wasn't boom boom again. I mean I ended up making a whole what if episode if Mario actually went to this kingdom and was able to explore everything and things ended differently, he actually ended up being able to capture a different dragon and just go watch the video, it's weird, but imagine being able to capture the Lord of Lightning. That would have been so cool. But the Lord of Lightning was one of the coolest surprises in recent years for Nintendo, and especially within a Mario game. And I would have loved to see more of this character, and hopefully we get to in Mario Odyssey 2, or maybe we get to see more of the world itself with the Ruined Kingdom. But whatever happens, I'm glad Nintendo chose this path and chose to take a risk, and I hope we see more risk and crazy ideas like this for Mario games in the future. Let's just not let Bowser have boobs again.